Allegheny Journal has found Nonette Cosgrove, who has spent 28 years here at the JRTC, and she's retiring in about a couple of days. And so she joins us here today, and we had to start over because we didn't turn on the mic. But we're all having a good time. And I think the only reason why this interview's happening is her students, some of whom are behind us here, said, yes, Nonette. Yes, Miss Cosgrove, do it. So, Nonette, it's going to be bittersweet when you no longer come to this classroom of early childhood learning. Is that correct? Yes, it is. So tell us about what kind of characters do you have out here? What kind of students have you had this year? What's your experience has been? They're the best. They are the best. Um, this is learning at its best because learning is best when you receive new information and integrate it into what you already know. These students are second year students, the students that are with me now. And you call them the teachers they are sometimes. The teachers, yes, they are the teachers of the children. Uh, they teach, we have a learning community. And in our learning community, there's the teachers, which is inclusive of all my students, the families, the parents, grandparents are vital to our program, and the children. And we all learn from each other. So the children learn from the teachers and the parents and grandparents. Uh, we and the parents and grandparents teach the children. It goes, it goes all ways. The teachers teach the parents and the parents teach the teachers. Teachers learn from the children, children learn from teachers. Uh, so it's a, a learning and loving community. And how did you first decide to get into early childhood <laughs> education? I told my students, um, I went to uh, the University of Connecticut and um, I was basically in behavioral sciences and I love behaviors. I wonder about animals, people, uh, why they do the behaviors they do. Um, I'm a baby boom generation. My father was a pilot in World War II. He was in a prisoner of war camp. Um, he told me about a, a fellow from the camp had to go to a concentration camp and he came back silent. He wouldn't talk anymore. And it just intrigued me about human behavior and why humans have all these capacities to do for good and for evil. And what makes it go one way or another way? Why do we do what we do? Was my leading question. And the same thing with animals. Horses, dogs, cats, bears, any animal. And this way you get to start at the beginning <laughs> with early childhood education. Right. Do you see any trends in the learning of or in the development of this field? Okay. When I first uh, went to the administration at University of Connecticut and said I want to teach child development in high school, they said we don't do that. And I said, well, I think it would be a good idea if we do it. If we were to do it, what would I have to take? And they said, uh, we don't know. We'll look it up, come back in a week. And they said, social studies or home economics. And I thought, well, I don't sew or cook, so I hope it's not home economics. And I don't know what social studies really is, so I didn't know what to do. So I came back and they said it was home economics. So I made a dress and gave it to Goodwill, and then I got to take nutrition classes instead of cooking. And at that age, I just didn't do much cooking. Um, I love nutrition. And then I started to get to take early childhood education, human relations, child development, family relations. And um, children just always lit me up. Uh, children are the most interesting of all the behavioral sciences I could do. We can tell that from the composition of this class. So what do students learn, starting with the basics? I'm not sure that the public understands fully how the program is structured. Okay. Well, in early childhood education, to go back to your first question, early childhood education is basically from uh, birth to five years old when they go to kindergarten. Now, when I started this program, they didn't have much kindergarten in going on in Allegheny County. Um, at first, kindergarten was two days a week, half day. They didn't really think children could learn as young as they learn. 
but the science says that the first three years of a child's life are the most important. And the first five are right up there. The first five are integral to the rest of the learning process. So early childhood education, these children, these teachers could tell you what they see these children doing. We, um, not by force by any means, but by choice, offer many educational experiences to the children in really fun ways. So they want to do it. And then they learn so much. Uh, we have children le leaving the program as emerging readers, and they're going into kindergarten. A great story. That must be really exciting to see that right. growth. Uh, I'll say names in this one. Haley Jonas, if you're out there, I'm talking about you, girl. Haley Jonas is uh, uh, going to kindergarten next year. And we went to kindergarten readiness at Mountain View Elementary School where we visit Miss Vi's class. And uh, some of my graduates are there, our graduates are there. And they broke up into groups and read books to the children, these little books. And so this little boy read to Haley Jonas and one of my teachers. And uh, when he was finished, she put the book down and walked away, went to walk away. And Haley Jonas picked up the book and read it right back to him. So, early childhood education, these kids can learn so much if it's done in, in developmentally appropriate ways. Well, that's really, it's a fascinating story. And so, when you no longer show up every morning to teach your blocks and your various students, <laughs> what is No Net Cosgrove going to do with that extra time? Okay, Katie Fields, I'm going to miss you guys so much. And I think they'll miss you. Um, but I have a really busy, fun life, and um, I will be working on my farm. Uh, one of my happiest things is to just be on the tractor, mowing and putting up hay, doing the fun things that happen on a farm. And even the hard things I still like to do because I'm always learning. And so I learn how to do more things all the time to build and construct and farm work. But also on the fun side, I have a son that lives in Wyoming and he is an outdoor adventurer. He's an engineer in the Medicine Bow National Forest, um, but he takes a lot of time off. And every year we do a really fun adventure in the wilderness. And he's my guide. That sounds really interesting. And we thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. We knew you'd be a good interview. <laughs> and thanks to all of your students who recommended it. Oh, <laughs> okay, I get, I get it. Oh, okay, gotcha.